Hello everybody, welcome to Leet Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Leet Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Leet Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another uh, edition of So You Want to Be a Video Podcaster series. Um, <clears throat> this is the third in the series. Um, you might be able to see, I don't know, depending on how my green screen works. You know, I just realized that behind me, I got, <laughs> I got all my stuff there, but I'm blocking it. So I guess you haven't seen it the last two episodes, but I have like all my cables and extra stuff back there. Um, anyway, uh, so, and it might look kind of weird because it's supposed to be like a flat background and that's actually my bed behind me. Um, so the green screen does that, I don't know. That'll be interesting to see how, the, how uh, Final Cut deals with that. But you can probably already start seeing, um, I don't know, I can see it there, the, the sunlight coming through the blind. So this episode, you might really start seeing some like weird lighting on this side of um, what's going on. Anyway, um, so this is gonna be a long episode, so uh, grab a Snickers bar, grab some popcorn, and your beverage of choice, because we're gonna talk about camera equipment. All right, and I got a lot going on here. All right, so um, hopefully you've watched the other two episodes, and we've talked about uh, branding and how to be a podcaster. Now at this point, pretty much, if you just wanna know how to do video, you can listen to me if you like. Um, there are some awesome guys out there that are like DSLR video like nuts and they create small films and commercials and they're professionals and they, they'll tell you about focal length and focus and all this other stuff and ISO and shutter speed and dude, I don't know any of that stuff because I use a video camera normally. I'm using my webcam on this, not the, not the computer webcam, I'm using this because, well, I, I'm at my computer. And I don't really have anywhere to put a camera. I mean, I could, but um, this is easy because it goes right into the computer. And the, the quality on this webcam is really good, but we'll get to that in a second. All right, so camera equipment. So just, so first, the first thing I'm gonna tell you, because you might be trying to do this on the cheap, is, well, first of all, the, the, first, the one of the best rules of photography is the best camera in the world to use is the camera that's in your hand. And what's in your hand more, more often than anything, than anything else? Take that reminder off. <laughs> this. It's Mars. That's my nickname. This. Your phone. I have, yeah, I have the 10. This camera is pretty amazing. For ph photography, I mean, for how small it is and what you can do. I mean, it's not a DSLR, but the quality of pictures I got off of this thing, you know, um, I mean, I didn't have it in Burgundy. I had my, I had my uh, iPhone 7. So, I mean, quality of pictures is great. Um, the video is incredible. This is even better. Even even the front-facing camera is, is pretty good uh, as far as uh, video. Um, that's what I was using um, in Burgundy. I was using, you know, was I using the front-facing? I think I was. I don't remember. I don't remember anymore. But this right here, your, your mobile phone, whether it's an iPhone, an Android of some sort or whatever, um, as long as it's made in recently, I mean, there's a lot of people that, that get iPhone SEs and they use them as their camera, okay, for a video camera, um, because it takes incredible, I think, I think it even takes 4K video if you want it, if you want to. So, and it's relatively cheap just to buy straight up and you can buy them used, unlocked. You don't even need them as a phone. They just buy them as a camera. They don't even worry about like activating them or putting a SIM card in them. So, I mean, that's, that's where we're at right now, especially the price on that compared to other cameras you can buy. This is the, the smallest footprint and the lightest footprint you will find. Okay, now, so what are the advantages and disadvantages of these things? Um, and I'll kind of include, somewhat include tablets, but tablets are really unwieldy to use as video or photography, though you can find things, you can find um, stuff to put on a tripod, like, you know, things to hold them in gimbals, whatever, but, we're really talking about smartphones, okay? So first of all, you probably already have one, so you don't need to buy anything extra. It's always with you because everyone has their phone with them at all times. So 
you know, if you want to take a quick video, you know, if you're like in your gorilla video type of thing and you've got your selfie stick, boom, right here, man, you got it in your pocket, you're out like at a, at a concert or you're, you know, whatever, whatever you're podcasting about, right? And you, and you, you're going to be someplace and you want to create, take like, you know, like some cool little quote gorilla video. It's, you already have it. You don't need anything else. And you got a selfie stick to give you a little bit of distance, right? Um, that's the only reason I, I, that's the only reason I use selfie sticks to take video. I don't use it to, like take pictures when I'm out like at the club or whatever. Um, highly portable, they're lightweight, and you and you're gonna have them on you instead of like in your backpack or luggage. So it's not any extra weight. Uh, typically, like I said, typically cameras really really good on these phones. Um, even though there's a, the sensors on these are smaller than than the other options that you have, other than maybe this web. Well, the webcam doesn't really have. Yeah, I guess it has a sensor. I don't know. I mean, it's feeding it to the computer, so it has a sensor of some sort. I'm, I'm not well versed on webcam and and all that, but I know this one has really good video compared to the actual iMac webcam. Um, the default camera app most of the time on your on your smartphone is good enough. Um, I I used the the default camera when I went to Burgundy. Um, I did use Filmic Pro on here when I recorded a bunch of videos um, before my surgery, and I was using the phone for that, so I was using that rather than my video camera. Um, so the problem with you know not using using anything other than the default camera is that there's always so many options you can use with these pro quote pro quality apps that um, it can be confusing and you can actually kind of make it worse. It's like, you know, having a, a digital or DSLR camera and you decide to go into full manual mode and you got stuff that's out of focus, out of, out of, you know, overexposed and, and blah, 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 and blurred. And so, you know, you can totally do that with these pro apps. Um, let's see. Um, you can use small light tripods with these things. You don't need big tripods. So I love this tripod. Now, is this, I mean, it's also, it's got a little like Bluetooth thing to like, you can kind of, I guess, make it a selfie stick. I don't know. But I mean, this is, this fits in my backpack. Like it fits laying down at the bottom of my backpack. Whereas a normal tri uh, tripod, which I didn't pull one out because you all have seen a tripod, you know, they're, they're like about this big, so they don't fit flat and they're too, and they, they stick out the, the top, very, very top of my backpack. And then you have your little extra thing here. You have to get that. But I mean, I collapse it. It's awesome. Now the, the, the disadvantage of a tripod like this is it's not as sturdy. It's not as steady. Um, I found out when I recorded the Pool Essentials um, uh, episode with my friends Christian and Laurel Lynn that um, this was kind of vibrating during the episode. So, which I didn't see happen in Burgundy, but I used this in Burgundy with my phone. I love this thing. It's so compact. Um, see what else uh bah, 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 bah. oh you can use, you can use the front camera so that means you can you know use the front camera you can frame yourself like you see keep seeing me look, looking up because i'm looking at the actual video feed on my computer to kind of just i don't know why i'm looking at it. I, i'm framed fine but i'm always trying to focus on the camera and that's actually kind of a pro tip don't look at that because you're not commute you're not connecting with your your audience look at the camera i mean what, what do people do on TV? You know, especially like newscasters, right? Or, you know, I mean, interview shows, they don't ever really look at the camera unless they're going for effect, right? They're like, look, they're usually looking at their interview person. Like you see me do that. I, I, I look at my, the person I'm interviewing, my guest, and occasionally I look at the camera to be kind of like, quote, bring you in. It's actually calculated. I mean, I study that stuff. I'm not an expert necessarily, but I observe what, how people do video, not just like, Okay, they use a they use a web editor. I mean, they use an editor and they upload it. I mean, I I looked to see how they do things on video, and I've there's tons of guys out there on YouTube that'll tell you how to do techniques and all this other stuff, right? Again, I'm not like a master at it. I'm like doing master classes, but you know, watch watch this stuff. You know, it's also kind of cool. Watch TV silently, like if you're at a bar, and like commercials are great because you know you can they're trying to tell a story in a commercial in 30 seconds, and you know, try to watch those commercials and you can't hear the audio, no music. You don't hear this thing. So kind of see how they frame stuff or just like we see like a, the bar puts, you know, has a channel like says TNT on. And then after the basketball game's over, they, it's, you know, some TV show, 
watch how they frame, how they shoot those scenes. Because you don't have the you don't have the audio to distract you anymore. So all you can do is concentrate on the video. S seriously, I've done that for years. Um, it's very interesting. For me, it is. I don't know. But you might think I'm crazy. Um, anyway, so yeah, so you can. But anyway, so you can typically look at yourself, kind of like quickly look at it, because you know the camera is like right there. So your your eyes aren't going to go too far off. Like in this case, I mean, my you know like that, right? When I'm looking, when I do my video camera, um, the LCD screen is like right there. So you know, you can kind of see me look occasionally. I mean, it's a little bit farther away, so my eyes aren't moving as much. But I mean, you can tell when I look at the LCD screen on my camera, my video camera, to kind of look at myself. And I mean, again, I've framed myself already. Nothing's really going to change as far as my framing. So you just look look at the camera. Um, so and my notes are over here. That's why I keep looking over there. Uh, so disadvantages, um, you have limited control of the camera. So like I said, you have these pro apps that give you some control, but there's some limitations that you can't do. Audio, if you're using quote on camera mics, which you should almost never do, you see I have a lavalier, okay? Um, right here, my lavalier. Um, you want the microphone as close to your mouth as possible. And that's an audio, we'll get to that another episode. Um, but um, audio isn't always the best when it's an on camera. Phones are notoriously bad. But some phones are better than others. I mean, iPhones tend to be actually kind of good. I um, mean, you can also on the Pro apps, you can you can say I want the front, I want the front mic, I want the bottom mic, I want the back mic. Because if you didn't realize, um, actually I don't know where it is on the iPhone 10, but on 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 iPhones there's a, there's a little microphone in the back. It's supposed to help with the background noise to help um, eliminate it. So I guess it analyzes it and then like does some type of fancy schmancy like noise elimination. Um, depending on the phone, uh, you may have storage limitations. So of course, iPhones are notorious that you can't put an SD card in there. Well, you know what? That's why I bought the 256 gigabyte one. Listen, you can't afford the, the, the big dog. I get it. I mean, this stuff is expensive, even if you are paying only a monthly fee, you know, um, you know, you might be all, you may not be able to afford 40 bucks a month on the iPhone 10 big dog plan. You may only be able to afford like $30 or 25, you know, I mean, Hey man, I've been there multiple times, you know, an extra 10 bucks is an extra 10 bucks, you know, or 20 bucks. Um, but on iPhones, I have this now, I just recently was on Amazon and this version, the version of this lightning USB, cause it's also a USB and it's also a micro USB. You, um, you do something. Oh yeah. You do this. So you like the little micro USB thing. Um, anyway, so this, I can take stuff off of the phone. If there's an app on the phone. It works most of the time. And I found out like, I have a really thin clear case. I have to take the case off for this thing to, to, um, to plug in completely. I had another one and it sucked. I used it in Burgundy and I was, I mean, I didn't have a, I didn't even have anything on the iPad. I was trying to put stuff on the iPad and it was like, it barely ever saw it. This one is the G Ting and I'll, I'll put a link to one I have, but I, I looked, I have one like on my Amazon list for 128 gigabytes for like, you know, maybe in two, three years, whenever I can afford to go on a, another trip again. Um, you know, use that, use the phone as my camera, like I did in Burgundy. And then since the file sizes can be kind of big, um, put them on here so that I free up the space. But I mean, like I said, I have, I have a ton of space on my phone. That's why I bought the phone I got. Otherwise I would have gotten 128 gig. Um, if you have a Samsung or Google or whatever, you can get SD cards and you can put your storage in there. So that's, that's kind of cool. Um, battery life. So battery life, that's a big thing. Basically, if you're at home, and you're doing your stuff and you still want to use your phone, just plug it in. Like why rely on battery life? Now, when I did my tests, uh, using the phone as my, this phone as my camera, um, a few months ago, I intentionally did not have it plugged in. I want to see how long I could go, how many hours I could record without plugging it in. I went pretty long. Um, but I also like made sure it was on do not disturb, um, turned off anything that, that would interfere. And now with, with that filmic pro app, um, I, my iPad can control it. Like it, it'll, it'll broadcast to me, like for my pet analysis, um, my anniversary, 400th anniversary show. I did have the phone, but I used my video camera. My phone was kind of like the backup and kind of like a test thing. And my iPad, I can see everything on there. Um, you can control the phone that way. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, it also means that you don't have to use the front facing camera. You can 
you can frame everything and then you can make sure you can use an iPad to check everything out. Um, but uh, battery life, uh, I did everything I could on the phone to like, you know, screen was dim as much as it could, you know, wasn't using cell service at all, you know, anything to try to reduce battery life on it or increase battery life, reduce the, the load on there. But it's still going to drain a lot of battery and, you know, video takes, takes a lot of processing power and your phone will get warm, maybe even hot. So especially if you're using it for long periods of time in video. Um, so yeah, so all that stuff I did is make sure you don't get phone calls, text messages, notifications, you know, because depending on what you're using to record the video, that literally could stop the video recording. So again, it's kind of cool to have like that app on the, on the iPad. If I'm not seeing the, I'm using the front facing camera because I can quickly glance and make sure the little red, the red dots there. So as I'm recording and like something didn't like make it stop. Um, whereas otherwise you have to have your front facing camera and keep looking occasionally and make sure that it's recording. Um, that's what I actually do with my video camera. Um, that's kind of why I look off to the side occasionally is I'm looking, there's usually like a little red dot, like right here above because it's centered and it's usually right above me. And that means it's recording. So I look for the red dot. If it's there, then I know I'm good. Um, also to make sure I started recording because I have done that or I'm like, let's go on the webcam. There's little, little, some little blue things on the side. So I know I'm recording or the camera's on. I mean, it's, yeah, it's on. Uh, your lens, your lens isn't necessarily great to do anything creative other than like sit in front of it and talk. Okay. If you're going to try to get super creative with, with a film, film type stuff and video, you can do some of that. But honestly, the actual phone lens is not going to be enough. Um, you're going to have to invest in some other lenses moment is probably the leader right now in iPhone for sure. And I think they, I think you can use their lenses on other, on other phones. Um, they have a special case and it, um, it kind of attaches to it. So you, have, you can get clip on lenses and apparently they're okay. But the problem is if you don't line them up just quite right and you get like some, some, uh, distortions on the edges. So, um, so if you're going to do that and get really creative and like take more film type stuff, um, so you're really not being a podcaster necessarily. That's cool. I would suggest if you're going to do that, um, at least get the moment battery case, cause that's also battery life. Battery cases are great. Okay. They really help out. Uh, and I'll talk about something else, and I'll talk about that right now. And these types of batteries, like, so actually this is hooked up to my, to my audio, my audio recorder right now. That's how I'm recording everything. You can't see it because the batteries that came with it finally died. But so you have to have a special cable, which I already had. Um, but you can also use this to plug into your phone and it'll keep the battery going. All right. Um, not just charge it up. Um, but you want to get like the moment case and then the moment lenses, you get them, you get one of the moment lenses and then they have like a filter adapter. I think some other companies have the same thing. And what can you do? Bam. You can put a lens hood on there. Why do you want a lens hood? Well, if you're outside in the sunlight, and the sun's at a certain angle, you get lens flare, like a, okay? Um, yeah, that's why the Pedernalis um, episode was not the camera, was not the uh, phone video because halfway through, massive lens flare. Actually, the, the, the sunlight actually was almost, direct, almost directly into the lens. This may not have helped, but that's something to think of when you're out, when you're recording outside in the sun. You never see these guys with their mobile phones, like recording all these awesome things about talking about lens flare, because you know what? They just deal with it. They, they just make sure they don't get it or if they get it, it's part of their artistic stuff. But you know, why do they, I mean, this is, this is from my, this is from my digital camera. This is, this is from my digital camera. I also have it on my video camera. Um, well, it's permanently on there. So why, why do photographers use this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Basically there's nothing, no, there isn't a way to, to, to put like just for your lens or like this, there are no lens hoods for mobile devices at all. I, I looked for months the, and I found, I found a couple like jerry rig things and then moment came out with their, their filter adapter. And then the filter, what happens is it, there's a, there's a thing on there that is a screw and the filter screw on that. Well, it's also your lens hood. You just got to get the right size screws on it too. So pro tip. Um, all right. Webcam or your computer. Well, what do you know? Um, 
So laptops, right? Laptops have webcams normally. Anything in the past like five, seven years, no matter who the manufacturer is, has a webcam on the laptop, right? It's good enough. Um, my iMac and a lot of all-in-one computers have it. Or you can buy a dedicated webcam like I have, which I am not, I can't really show you because it's recording. Um, this, is, uh, this is the Logitech, uh, I have it down here, the Logitech HD Pro Webcam C920. There's another one that is, um, has a background replacement. So like I'm a green screen going on, so I, you know, I think it should be working out right where you see uh, the barrel room behind me. Um, and things might be a little cut off because this is the edge of where, whoops, here we go, edge, edge. This is the edge of the green screen right here. There's still some actual video there and I probably have cut it off so my hands are probably not there. Um, and actually, the, oh, sorry, the wall is right here too. Anyway, um, <laughs> it's always weird to do that. <clears throat> anyway, that webcam supposedly will take the background out. I've read it's not that great and you have to have a Windows machine for it to, to do it anyway. And I don't have, and I mean, I could run Windows. I have Windows in a virtual machine on my computer, but I don't know. Um, anyway, so um, so you can, uh, like I said, usually you have it in the computer or if you need to, you can buy one. Uh, advantages, so advantages to a webcam. Um, if it's on your computer, it's already built in. So it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a cell phone. It's already there. Now, if you're going to go out into the field, using your laptop webcam probably isn't the best thing, okay? Um, uh, anyways, using good enough video quality, um, the, the camera I'm using now, it, in general, have better quality than anything built into a computer. Um, your video file is already on the computer. I kind of already mentioned that. Um, it just has to save, and this actually, each, each of these videos so far has taken a while to save because they're actually pretty big video files. Um, Speaking of that, your computer probably has plenty of storage space. Hopefully, you know, they'll have more than this, okay? And more than your SD card. Um, if you have a laptop, you have a portable setup, like I said, you're probably not gonna, I mean, you're not gonna put it on a tripod and, and you know, do, you know, sit in front of a desk and use it as your camera for video interviews if you go out in the field. But you could, like, you know, if you really, you're, if you're, that's your stick, that's your that's your thing, and you're like, hey man, you're gonna take your you take your laptop and you're gonna sit at a desk with somebody, you're gonna interview with them. You totally could do that, you know. Um, speaking of that, uh, let's see, I think that should be my last one. Oh, well, with the right software, um, you can control exposure, uh, brightness levels, temperature. Actually, I'm not gonna do it, but I have a um, yeah 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 yeah, I have a uh, um, a thing called eyeglasses on uh, the Mac. And it allows me to control brightness, temperature, tint, saturation, uh, contrast, gamma, sharpness, and then my exposure, white balance, and focus. I can make it auto, manual, whatever. Um, so right now, I have the brightness toned down just a tad. Um, temperature is right down in the middle. So, I mean, my, my white balance, effectively, temperature is kind of the same. Um, and then uh, my tint is down the middle. Saturation, I gave myself just a touch of color, so I'm, got my, I'm not completely pale. Um, contrast, I gave myself a little extra contrast. Um, gamma and sharpness, I didn't change at all. Now, reason I do that, those little adjustments in camera, um, so I mean, your, your phone, you can do that. And on this, I can do that, is because when you do your editing, hopefully it looks good enough when you edit so you don't have to tweak it anymore. But you can always, quote, fix it in post. Um, let's see what else, uh, where am I at? Webcam advantages, dis disadvantages. Um, yeah, with the right software, blah, blah, blah. Disadvantages, video quality if on, as far as the built-in is probably the worst of all of your options that we're gonna cover today. Um, external webcams, like I said, usually are, are much, much better. Um, audio, um, if, you, if your audio is totally coming from the camera or co coming from your computer, the, the microphones on these computers are usually not the best. Um, let's see. Hopefully I'll say this is the audio right now from coming from the internal microphone. I think it's the internal microphone. It could be coming from this webcam. It has a microphone on it, which that would be the best option if I wasn't using this. So let's see. Um, in, input. Input is coming from the internal microphone on this iMac, which I honestly don't know where it is on the iMac. My old iMac I know was on the very top, but this is like such a small thing. So let's let's change it up. Okay, now 
the audio is coming from the webcam. So it's, it's going to sound different. It might even sound pretty good. I don't know. Um, so we've got that. Now, we're gonna, now back to Lavalier. Okay, so, um, but typically your, your microphone on your computer isn't that great. Uh, again, try not to use, quote, on-camera microphones. Try to have something like this. Um, but we're going to, when we do audio, I'll talk about some options you have. Uh, let's see, hard time to frame the shot. Hard to frame the shot. Now, what I mean by that is you can see everything, but sometimes with like, you know, this webcam is not too, it's like, what, about three? And that's really, really close to me. Um, laptop is usually even closer. So you're, you're kind of like, oh, you're like all up into this, into the thing. And then it's like kind of angled. So you're like, you're like, you're like this. And you know, it's like, it's all kind of like, it's really hard to like set it up. Like I got a little mini tripod. It's almost eye level to me. That's awesome. Whereas if I was on the iMac, it'd be up here. So it'd be looking down at me. If on the laptop, it's looking up to me. So like, especially if I'm doing my green screen, it'd be really difficult to do that. So this is the, how I have it for an external webcam. It's really good. Um, hard to frame shot. Uh, so yeah, especially if you have to have more than one person in the image. Okay. Like here, I could totally like sit here and I could have somebody sit here and we could be really like literally like next to each other and it would work. Okay. But, um, yeah, so you can do that. Um, and then I call it a disadvantage, but like, I know, I, mean, I, I say it gives a cheap look to your podcast. If that's your intent, if you're kind of like, Hey man, I just want to put video out and, and you're probably not a podcast anyway. I know a guy on YouTube that does this. He's badass. Okay. Um, he does wine reviews. He has thousands of wine reviews. You should check him out. James, James, the wine guy, James Melendez, man. Melendez. Yeah, I think it's Melendez. Um, it's James, the wine guy on YouTube. Like just look him up and he, that's what he uses, man. And he's been doing it for years and you know what? It works because he's not trying to be fancy. You don't have to be fancy. I'm just trying to show you how to be a little more fancy and guess quote professional because that's what I want to do for my stuff, right? There's nothing wrong with you if you're trying to do budget, bare minimum, that's totally cool. Realize that all this stuff I keep talking about, especially now from camera equipment on onward, I've spent since 2009, so nine years, I've gotten to this point. So I've spent nine years working on this stuff. I didn't start this way. I started with a flip cam and nothing else. I sat, I sat at the dining room table and the, 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 the windows were behind it. So I always recorded during the day. So I had daylight, like there's daylight coming through right here. Right. But I have like really bright lights and all this kind of stuff. So it, it looks pretty good. I could be doing this at night and it would probably look about the same as it looks now. Okay. Um, I see the, the problem with like auto, whatever, like see how it, it, it washes stuff out. Um, so like when, when you have like other cameras, you can kind of lock that stuff in. I mean, I could kind of lock it in, but it, it didn't look really good. Um, anyway, so now what else? Digital cameras or DSLRs. Now I have a digital camera. This is a really nice digital camera. It's not a DSLR. This is the, uh, Canon SX 520HS. I think I spent slightly less than 300, around 300 or so on this. I bought it for the Burgundy trip. Why? Well, I had another, t I have the SX230, which it's not convenient for me to have in front of you, but I use that for my Bordeaux trip and I use it for Napa Valley. Um, and it's great, but it had a 12 times zoom. This has like a 50 or 16 megapixels, so better than mega, 42 times optical zoom. So, I mean, I got some, I mean, I could be far away from, you know, the Hill of Corton and get zoom in, right? It's awesome. That's why I bought it. Okay. A better camera, better photography. You can also do video on this. You can also do video on DSLRs or mirrorless. They're effectively the same thing. Um, the only difference between DSLR and a mirrorless is that the mirrorless is more like this where the video image, correct me if I'm wrong, but the image goes directly to the sensor. Whereas, um, and that's why you have an LCD screen on the back and a viewfinder. Um, whereas the DSLR, um, you have the viewfinder and then you look at it and then when you click the picture, it's like an SLR, single lens reflex. What happens is a little mirror puts it to the element, you know, to the sensor or in the old days, the actual film. And so when you took the picture, you didn't see, you couldn't see anything through the viewfinder anymore. I don't have a mirrorless camera and I thought I looked all this up a long time ago and I think the mirrorless camera does, doesn't do the little flip. It, it, you keep the image the entire time and a DSLR, the mirror, you, you lose the image in the, through the viewfinder. I might be wrong on that. So 
Like, I don't have a DSLR because I, they're, I think they're stupid to use for what I do. But they have some advantages, and we're about to go over them. Advantages. It typically takes great video since it takes great pictures. Why? Because I use it as an awesome lens on it. And it usually has a really nice, um, a nice large um, sensor, way larger than on your phone. Okay, so it can take, so it can really collect, you know, those 40, those 16 megapixels and all that stuff. So it takes usually takes really good uh, pictures because it's a DSLR. And digital cameras are good too. I mean, I, I group them all together because they're they're, they're close enough. Okay, um, but they also can take really great video. Um, you can adjustable focal length. So that really means like, okay, like I'm in focus and you can put it so like, and, and honestly, I'm looking at my image right now and the clamps on the green screen are kind of out of focus because this has basically is focusing like right here and it's on auto focus. I mean, I said manual, I have a manual focus. So let's see if I can play around with this. So if I play with the focus here, you see that I, I'm not focused. Matter of fact, I'm not focused at all. That's in focus, okay? I know, you know, hand right in the middle. So, um, and so that's manual focus. Auto is supposed to like, you know, keep whatever the main subject in focus. It's supposed to be in infinite focus, I guess, but it's really not because like the, the very, like, like I said, the clamps are qu not quite sharp when I'm looking at, when I'm looking at the green screen. Um, so it's kind of like focal length where what it does is it, it you can have everything in focus or you can have, have, things shorter or farther away in focus. And that's how I understand focal length. I'm not a pro on photography. Go watch someone's video. As a matter of fact, again, I'll have links to all these. I got some, those, some guys that do video slash DS, you know, pictures. They're, they're amazing what they do with their stuff. Um, anyway, usually the best sensors for video. Oh yeah. Sorry. That's video cameras. Um, let's see. Uh, optical zoom is superior though. How often do you need it for a talking head video? Right now, you might be doing landscapes. You might be doing some stuff. So you want to like zoom in on something, or it might be that might be part of your podcast or your video. So like I said, forty-two time optical zoom. The iPhone is two time optical zoom. Yes, you can do like the you, digital zoom on cameras and all that. You can do that, but it's trickery in the software, and it's not as sharp. It's like good enough for like, hey, I'm showing my friend a picture right on my phone. Um, Multi-use for video and pictures. So like, if, so instead of having a camera and a video camera, you have everything all in one. So it's just a bigger phone, a better quality phone, but it's not a phone too, right? So you can't communicate with it, but it's multi-use. So that's kind of cool. Um, lenses. So again, for podcasts, like, like a podcast like this, where it's like a talking head, the standard lens that comes with it, at least it should come with one, is going to be plenty but if you need to get creative, you need to like extra telephoto or macro or all that stuff, you can swap, swap lenses out. I mean, these guys, you know, like, you know, you've seen these photographers like on the sidelines, they got those huge long lenses, right? You know, they can get those extreme close-ups and awesome shots. Well, you don't really need it for a podcast unless your podcast is about like photography and you're doing it in a video sense. Okay, and so you're gonna show your pictures or you're doing extreme video, like filmmaking, whatever. So yeah, again, there, there's a use for them, but for the vast majority of us that are just like sitting in front of a camera, you don't need it. Um, swappable batteries. iPhones can't do it. I don't remember if, there are any, if the Androids can do it still, but I know for a long time, everyone's like, ah, iPhone sucks because I can swap the battery out of my phone. like. Well, that's why they try to have great battery life on the iPhone. So you don't have to swap out the battery. And now, you know, you can get small ones of these. You can plug in your phone or you go to the, go to a cafe, plug it in. Now you can, 10 years ago, it wasn't as, wasn't as prevalent to be able to do that stuff. Um, you know, when you are out and about in the field doing stuff, it makes you look professional because everyone uses a DSLR. Or mirrorless, you can't, it's kind of hard to tell the difference. I mean, even this, I mean, if somebody didn't know any better, they would think it's, you know, a DSLR because they don't know I can't change, you know, they might go, oh, you can't change the lens, but to them it's a DSLR because a lot of people don't know there's a difference. Um, what else do I have on here? Uh, can use just about any size memory card uh, that you want. So as far as memory space, you know, first you can use plenty of memory cards so you, you have effectively unlimited memory. 
Uh, and then you can swap them out when you need to. And it's easier than a phone to adjust things like white balance, exposure, all that kind of stuff. And you can you can usually lock it in. Now, the difference between this and a video camera is that they have things called like ISO and shutter speed, whereas video cameras really don't. And that gets a little more complicated and it's really more for photography. You can use it for video. I don't quite understand it so much. Um, so same thing on, on the phones with those professional apps. They, they talk about ISO and shutter speed. And I just want to go, I want white balance and exposure. That's all I want, okay? So which is what video cameras do, all right? Disadvantages, um, you have a hard time limit for video. What? My, my, my manual says I can record four hours of video because I have a 128 gigabyte hard uh, SD card. You can, but you can only record them 20 to maybe 30 minutes, really 29 minutes at a time. Now, so why do people use DSLRs for their films? Because they're not taking 20 minute, 30 minute shots like me. I'm, I'm at 35 minutes on this. I can't do this on a DSLR. I would have had to make more than one episode. I'd have to stitch it together. As soon as the thing was over, I'd be like, oh, hold on, me, start over again. That's the advantage of anything other than DSLR or digital cameras. Why? It's a tax issue. They are still cameras. They're picture cameras, not video cameras. So if they allow the video to be longer than 29 minutes, typically, um, the Japanese government puts it in a higher tax bracket, which means it's a more expensive camera. And since these are not meant to be used as video cameras, per se, that's why they do it. It's just kind of nice, nice little feature you have on it. Now, phones don't necessarily have that time limit because I've recorded stuff that is an hour long on these things. Granted, this is actually made in the United States. I don't know about Samsung and all the other stuff, but in Japan, where every single digital camera is made, DSLR or otherwise, basically, that's, what, that's why. And that's the biggest reason that I don't use a DSLR or video or digital camera. Uh, it's bulkier than a phone, okay? If you're looking for like a lightweight, it's bulkier than a phone. Um, you need a sturdier tripod. You can't use that tripod I just showed you. Um, you can't really use a selfie stick, okay? Um, not all of them have an adjustable LCD screen like this one. I can't, this one, some of them you can flip up, you can flip around, you can flip under. And some of them are like more like regular like digital cameras. Those are really cool. Um, I didn't get one because I don't use my camera that way. Um, they're heavier than a phone. Um, some are even heavier than a dedicated video camera. Um, yeah, my video camera is lighter than that than that camera. Um, let's see. You can be overkill if you're only going to record video at home. Like, why are you buying a $1,000 DSLR? Don't need it. If, especially if you've never, you know, I said price. You're... And it's overkill as far as like the quality and, and, the, and the capabilities. You know, you may not, maybe a digital camera, you could do that. But remember, again, you have that hard time limit. All right, so um, video cameras. This has been my tried and true for years and years and years and years and years. This is the Canon uh, Vixia F HF M500. I bought this, what, like five years ago, six years ago, seven? I can't remember. It's been a long time. I started with the flip cam. Then I went to a Kodak ZI8. And then I bought this because this has you know, everything I need, honestly. And it takes awesome. It's 1080p. I don't need 4K, but 1080p at 30, well, quote cool, 60i, but you know 30, 30 frames, per, you know 30 frames, uh, 30 thing frames per second or whatever. So standard video. I could also do 24 if I wanted to film quality. Um, you can do that with with these. Um, some digital, I don't know why I'm pointing out, you can't see it. Some digital cameras, some DSLRs can take 4K. You can buy 4K video cameras, but I think the cheap, well, there's some cheap ones out there that I wouldn't buy because they're like off brands. It's probably really crappy quality, even though it's 4K. Even when these were all the 1080p cameras were coming out, you had to be careful. Like the lens could be bad or, you know, the lens quality, the sensor quality, like how big the sensor is. And then the frame, the, 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 the bit rate that they're doing. Yeah, it's 1080p because it's that many pixels in the, in the, in the picture. But the quality of the recording isn't the best. So, yeah, it's 4K. Like, you know, this can take 4K. 
It's not going to be as good as a video camera that has a big sensor and an array lens or, or even a DSLR, but it's going to be probably good enough. Um, anyway, so, uh, anyway, so advantages, single piece of equipment, uh, single use piece of equipment. This is designed to take videos. Okay. Yeah, I can take still pictures too, but it's not meant to do that. Um, it usually has the best sensors in general for video. Um, however, yes, DSLRs might have better sensors overall. Um, but pound for, you know, dollar for dollar, this is probably gonna be a bit, be a better, um, sensor in it. I mean, this one's not because it's old compared to what's out there now, but if you get the current model, it'd be a better video, cam better video sensor, just like digital cameras. You can usually adjust white bands, white balance and exposure. However, most consumer or prosumer kind of video cameras, you can't adjust things like focal length. You can maybe adjust focus. Um, and there's no inter interchangeable lenses, but it's actually, that's the disadvantage. We'll get to that in a little bit. Um, let's see, can be lighter than a digital camera. This is lighter than this one, not by much, but it's about, they're about the same weight. Um, but though they may take up, uh, and they may, though they may take up the same volume, but they're th this different, right? Um, and you can really get some pretty big prosumer or pro cameras and they're, they are expensive. You know, they've got like the, the boom mic on it and all this stuff. You know, they're like, you know, they're basically like, um, you know, what the news reporters use and that's overkill, right? Um, you can swap memory cards, just like DSLRs. Um, you can swap batteries, just like DSLRs. I didn't say that really with the, with the um, oh yeah, I did. Um, you can also do an AC adapter in here. That's what I do at home. Um, I honestly, I meant to look. I don't think I can do that with this. Now, I know I looked it up. And I could, so in the battery compartment, so, which there's no battery in here right now, they have things where you leave this open and you, you stick a thing in there and you can plug in like AC power. So you can do that. All right. Um, what else I got in here? AC adapter, blah, blah, blah. Depending on the camera, uh, depending on the camera can look the most professional of the three types. Of, or the four types, I guess, the, the different types of cameras that you might use out in the field. You know, a video camera looks, but it's also this DSLR. So, ooh, DSLR. But like, if you get like a like a really fancy camera, it does. I mean, I had people remark, ooh, a video camera. I'm like, yeah, I don't use my phone. I will now in the field. Um, unless you want some fancy features, it's the cheapest of the three types. Yes, your smartphone can do it, but technically, this is what, an $1,100 phone? that I'm actually paying extra for. Like I could have kept my other phone once it was paid off, right? And just not pay any extra per month. All right. Um, let's see, I think I paid a little more than $300 for this, like what I remember many years ago. Um, like a digital camera, a video camera can last years. Um, good video cameras can be had for new under $300. Like the, the new version of this, I think is right about 300, maybe a little bit less. The current model of this disadvantages doesn't have all the cool lens stuff like DSLRs. Um, digital member digital cameras can't change lenses out. Uh, fixed focal length. I kind of mentioned that already. Um, for for high end video cameras, you can do that. Um, not multi use. Well, you kind of can take pictures with it, but it's a little more bulky. Um, and then related to the above, that means you need a camera for pics for pictures. So. I mean, when I went to Bordeaux, I bought a camera. It was a smaller camera. When I went to Burgundy, I bought a camera because I was using, uh, for good pictures, I wanted to use a camera rather than my phone, right? Though the phone, if you want like total like multi-use is the best. You know, so if you're using this, you want pictures, you gotta do something else. Um, all right, so part of the camera equipment, tripods. I already kind of mentioned this, but um, depending on the camera you use, I wanna make sure you use the appropriate tripod. Like I said, for this, the small, Portable tripod that fits in a backpack really easily is awesome. It's lightweight, doesn't add any bulk really. Um, home use, I would say get something that's sturdy but not expensive. Like I have a really cheap tripod I've used. I probably had the thing for over 10 years because I bought it. I forgot why I bought it. I bought it like a Best Buy. I think it was like 20 bucks, and I've had it forever. It, it still works. Um, it, I'm not trying to get smooth like movement where I'm like like panning. If you need to do that type of stuff again, you're probably not a podcast unless your podcast is about stuff like that. Um, so having smooth video movement when you're panning across like a, a, a landscape, or whatever, um, you're going to spend money on that. Now there are tricks to make things work a little bit, but I'm not going to get into that. Uh, travel, 
make sure uh, the tripod can support your camera. So that nice little light tripod um, might be able to support, support this. Maybe not this. A heavy DSLR, it's probably going to fall over, okay? You have to use a, a, a sturdier tripod. Um, so, uh, you want them as compact as possible. Now, I do have, like, on my Amazon wish list, I have a compact tripod that, far as I know, can fit in my backpack. Will it fit, like, laying down at the bottom? No, but it'll fit standing up. It's smaller than the, the, the space in my backpack. But, again, do I really need that? tripod probably not um let's see here uh oh did i mention a backpack so i've had this this is a swiss army backpack i've had this since 2005 check it out dude it's like almost like in perfect condition i used it for like work in chicago for those three years there and then when i moved to san antonio i didn't really use it but i use it for everything i use it for my stuff like i got all my i got all my stuff in here it's really for my studio. I have all my studio stuff's in it. Um, you want something that's big enough. Um, you can get a DSLR one, and they're cool if that's your thing. If you're a photographer, because you can put, put your lenses and all this stuff. You have these little compartments. But that does everything I need. And there's no compartments in it, which it can be a disadvantage. And it's, big, it's basically one big interior thing with a couple pockets in the front. It per suits me perfectly. I've looked at tons of backpacks. I mean, I don't need to replace this backpack by any means, but I look at backpacks all the time because there's something that's better out there, okay? Um, and usually if I find something that's close to being better, it's over $100. I think I spent 60 on that one. And I bought it like an Office Depot. It's a laptop backpack. It's awesome. Um, let's see. Or you can get a dedicated large camera case and some of them roll again this is if you're going to be professional videographer you're probably not a podcaster okay if you're doing that all right actually that's it for this episode again i'm glad i didn't try to put us all in one episode like i've done in the past because this thing would have been stupidly long all right so hopefully all that makes a little sense for you um gives you a little rundown on what type of camera to use again you're starting out Remember, this is probably the, your best option to start out with. Get a small tripod like I did. I think that pot, tripod cost me 12 bucks. I'll have links to all the equipment I use down below. Probably the Amazon link that's an affiliate link that if you buy it, I get some money. I have yet to get anything from Amazon, by the way. But quote, full disclosure, any links I put on there for products that are on Amazon, I have a, a um, an affiliate link that if you bought it, I'm supposed to get some kind of money, but I've never received anything. Matter of fact, I don't even know how much money I have in the account, if any. But all the links, everything that I that I have, that I, that I purchased through Amazon, uh, I almost buy everything through Amazon. It's just too easy to find everything. Um, or at least use Amazon to research, and maybe I buy it from a brick and mortar, but for the most part, I buy it from Amazon. I mean, I have a UPS, a replacement UPS, uninterruptible power supply coming, because the one I have, it's not the one for this computer, it's for the other equipment in the room. Um, it, we had a power outage, I don't know, one of the nights I went out, and I guess a spike of some sort, and everything went out, and I guess the battery that was in my UPS, the second UPS, finally crapped out. And I put a battery in there, because I bought two batteries uh, a little over a year ago, because the other one went out, and I put the battery in there, and it's not working. So I'm like, for 20, if I, I can spend another 20 something dollars for another battery, or I can spend another like 20 bucks more for a, a, um, another UPS. So that's what I'm gonna do. Anyway, um, so I say I'll have links, I'll have links down there for all that. Um, so click the links above to frame me up, click the links below to find out more about everything else I said. Hit the donate button over there, send me some ducats. Um, to help pay for all that equipment that I bought over the past nine years. Okay, and uh, we'll see everyone again next time.